This series of video clips shows some tips and techniques to working with the satin column fill of Stitch Artist. This is popular in TrueType fonts. Options in all of the three levels are demonstrated beginning with level one. So to break up our shape, because I have it set to a column stitch, you notice that we got satins going in weird directions. So one easy way to fix this is to break our shape into separate sections. To do that, we're going to select two nodes. So I'm in create mode. I'm going to use my lasso, select my two nodes, and I'm going to right click on one of them and where it says and choose break across. This is going to remove the satin fill, so we can't see it anymore. But when I now apply, and if I look at my object pane, I now have two objects. I have this one here, I have this one here, because I broke across that section. So now when I select this one and I go and hit satin column, I have a little bit more evenness. Now there's still some wonky stuff in here, but I can probably fix that by um, reshaping my nodes or deleting extra nodes or doing whatever it needs to do just for that section. So, but I can now have a lot more control because I only have this one thing to worry about. So now we have the next one. I'm for my satin column. We have the same wonky thing going over here. So I'm going to select my two nodes. I'm going to right click on one of them. Choose break across. So now I look at my object list here and when I look at it, I have, this is my first column. Here's my second column on the other side. Let's apply a satin stitch to it, and it, it's okay. And then we have our third one in the center, which we'll put a satin column on. And I'm going to basically do the same thing with that one here. But what I want to make sure is you see, we're now changing the stitching order. So this, we want this one to stitch first, the V to stitch second, and this one to stitch last. So I need to right click on it and say move last. So now it's going to stitch in order. I have a jump that's going in between because my starts and stops are in weird places. So we're not going to worry about that because I'm going to go to the create menu, choose auto entry exit, and that is going to readjust my starts and stops so that it's going to run nicely. And I knew that by going to my stitch simulator and I see my underlying stitches and it's going to stitch here and there's no jumps in this design. But my satins are at least now going in a more logical fashion. Okay, so in, as, in Stitch Artist Level 2, we use the break the same way as we did in Level 1 by selecting two points and choosing two break. But this time, when it, what we can make further adjustments without having to reshape nodes and things. Um, it's a little difficult to see. Let me turn off 3D. You see how we have some weird stuff going on here in this corner? The satins are going in a weird direction. That's because we're letting the computer choose the angles. In level two, we are able to use this add inclinations function, which has a true column stitch. So when I have my um, column selected, I can tell it specifically that I want these stitches to go along this angle direction. So there's going to be, I'm telling the software exactly how to put the angles in. See how nice and smooth they are? Same thing. I can see it even behind here. There's that little gobbledygook there. So for this angle, I'm going to choose my inclinations and I'm going to have it go across like this. And this one, I want to go across like this. Right click. Now, if I want to adjust any of these, I just grab it and I can adjust it and make my angles do anything I want once I have them in there. So that's one of the advantages to you, uh, creating your lettering using Stitch Artist Level 2. Just finish this up. This is... See, all nice, and I can go back again to my create menu and choose auto entry exit, and it will now stitch out nicely. So here we are with our letter M, and I'm going to show you how we use the advanced functions of Stitch Artist Level 3 on the same letter. So this gives you a lot more control. So we are in level three. 
We can do everything that we did in previous videos as far as breaking across and adding inclinations of those two levels. But on level three, when you have your two nodes selected and you right click, you have the option now to add a break line. Now when you do this, it basically puts a line right there in your object, but you only have one object. Unlike when you break across and you divide your op single object into more than one, when you choose to add a break line, it's simply adding dividing lines to the single existing object. So that means you don't have to, um, you have one fill. So if I, when I have this, sec this selected, I can simply click on my column stitch one time and it applies the column stitch based upon those break lines. Those break lines are also customizable. So let me go back into regular artwork mode. It's easier for me to see and I can grab my line and I can reshape it so that I can make it a curved break line. It doesn't have to be a straight break line. It could be any shape that you want. It just has to um, fall within, it has to work correctly in the parameters that you have selected here. And I'm, there we go. Need to reshape and fiddle. And you can actually do that for each one of them. Now, while we still have our one object selected, this means I can go in and add my inclinations. So I am going to go and add inclinations for these sections. Right click. So now all my angles are set and I can adjust all these angles. Maybe if I want to make this break line a little roundier. So it looks like a turkey bone. But what's also nice about this is that if I go down to my pattern, I can actually choose, as opposed to just a satin stitch, if I had done break across, I would have had to do this for each individual object. But now I can select one new fill for all these different objects, or there's one single object, and it applies it across the board. So I don't have to, I can make my adjustments. I can change my one underlay to be whatever it is that I need to be for this one object. So when I run my sew simulator on this, when you had, when you broke into smaller objects, it stitched each one by itself. This now does all the underlay for the entire object first. Now it does all the fill stitching. So you don't have to set your starts and stops or anything like that. This is a true lettering object that is completely customizable and able to be modified in Stitch Artist as you see fit.